I'ma need safety. Tell her I can't snake me. Ray gun off safety. My girl's so tasty. Tell her it's your world. She want the two tone spaceship. Blow smoke screen daily. So the stress don't face me. I'm going. I keep it factual. I'm on sabbatical. I'm out of Central America. I need a break from hysteria. Hey, y'all. Hey, guys. I'm Adrian. And my name is Alexis. And this is Black Love 2. So, what are we talking about today? Um, today we are talking about the first woman that I have ever loved. Okay. Um, this is actually a story time request that we got um, in the comment section. So this is the first and only woman that I've ever loved. First and only. So um, I guess maybe I can give a little bit of a backdrop. I wasn't really sure. Yeah, how to go into it. So give it to them um, raw. That's what they want. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear the raw. All right. So you guys want to hear the raw. So um, this basically will start back in. So if y'all have checked out our previous videos, which we do recommend that you guys go back and check out our previous videos, we actually have three other videos. We actually have another one. We need to upload it. Yeah, we have yeah. another one to upload. Um, again, before we get started, we want to say thank you for waiting patiently. Yes, um, thank it's God. been the holidays, so it's kind of been kind of hectic. But we want to thank you for hanging in there. We want to thank you for our hundred subscribers. Yes, we actually have I think like a hundred and ten subscribers. Hundred and ten. We want to thank yeah. all of you guys. It does not go unnoticed, and no, we are doesn't. very appreciative of of your time and your patience. This is true, and also we also want to thank you guys. Um, one of our videos actually has over a thousand views. So, so we want to thank all of you as well yes. for taking the time to, you know, look at our videos. Yeah, and um, support us. Yeah, and supporting us. Um, we're new to this, so we just want to give y'all some thanks. Yes. All right. So um, with that being said, Adrian and I met on Plenty of Fish in March of 2018. Mm -hmm. And actually, I was looking at today, We she actually has the day that we met um tattooed on her so that's a reminder as well but we actually met march 22nd of 2018 but prior to then um it's a kind of a, a i don't know kind of like a weird story it literally came out of nowhere um me and this girl that i used to work with you gotta gotta go back on who you were before, prior to so they can get the full okay so let me let me give you a background so prior to she jumps into this, Alexis was in church all the time. Uh, she did not condone, I don't want to say condone, uh, same-sex marriages at the time. Yeah. She wasn't, uh, you know, she grew up in a Baptist lifestyle. So you know how that go. Mm -hmm. uh, so she didn't like women. She never thought she would be with a woman. Ever. And ever. So that was the yeah. last thing she could have ever thought of. Mm -hmm. And then she runs into... Yeah. So um, I ran into this girl that I used to work with. So just, <laughs> just for clarification, I did feel... I felt like men and, you know, two men and two women could or should be able to marry. But I did not feel like it should be called a marriage. I felt like it should be called like something else because this was like back when Obama was in office when he actually legalized gay marriage and there was a lot of controversy going on as to what that title should be attached to the you know matrimony of two men or two women so I was kind of one of those people who I wasn't really sure what it should be called but I didn't feel like it should be called a marriage because traditionally the word marriage is you know marriages between a man, and a, man a and a woman and like she said like I right, was raised up in you know in the deep south and Baptist and we right. just I was never homophobic or anything like that but if you would have asked me even five years ago you know yeah. if I ever would have imagined myself being in a relationship with a woman the answer to that question would have been absolutely not right. yeah absolutely not but I don't know what happened. So fast forward, um, the, I'd say 2017, the year before I met Adrian, and this other girl that I used to work with, she's what they call a gold star lesbian. So she had never been with a man ever in her entire life. Whereas with me, I had always 
been with men up until Adrian. Mm -hmm. And so, um, anyway, so I don't know what happened. It literally like came out of nowhere. I remember like people at my job used to tell me like that she was low key liking me, but I guess when you don't have that type of eye, when you're not necessarily like looking for somebody that's checking for you, especially of the same sex, you don't really pick up on it. Like other people can see it. Cause I think kind of like what you told me, like sometimes you can be oblivious to. Yeah, I can be oblivious to other women, other women. hitting yeah. on me, but. Who are your friends and stuff? Like yeah. this girl was my friend. Like we would do girlfriend stuff. We would go get yeah. our nails done. You know, we just do regular homegirl stuff like me and Talori would do right. or me and any other girl would do. Right. So, you know, I definitely didn't see it. And she had a girlfriend and I, even, even if she was single, like I, I wasn't checking for a woman. So right. I just, I guess that intuitiveness just wasn't there. It had no need to exist um, because I definitely wasn't checking for her. So anyway, long story short, um, the girl at the time we're back in 17 now we're gonna go name we're gonna go nameless for the sake of the nameless. story we'll say her name was mary mary for mary. the sake of the story we'll say her name was mary so mary and i worked together and um basically we would hang out and do regular like homegirl stuff like i just y'all just heard me tell adrian and I would have people come up to me, like other coworkers come up to me and be like, you know, I think she's like feeling you or whatever. And I'd be like, whatever, like, nah, they'd be like, yeah, like she's following you around like a like a lost puppy or whatever. And you know, I just thought that that was just what friends do. Like if you work not, together, nah. if you work together. I'm not following around no friend like a lost puppy. I'm just not. Like if you my friend, like you my friend, I can be miles away or in another room and you still my friend. I don't have to be following you. Yeah, that. I mean, it, it just was more so like, you know. The girl she, liked her and she everybody else like saw me. it. So. Yeah, and you know, it was just like, if she was free, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't like she was like, <clears throat> always like this up on me, but it just was like, she was, at the time I was in nursing school, but she was already in her profession. So, you know, she's doing what she gets paid to do. She's not at work thinking about me. I don't, I didn't imagine, you know, I guess whenever you have free time and you have a friend that works in, um, you know, the same area or whatever, you know, you'll come and mm. come and, you know, shoot conversation with them a little bit. Sometimes, but not all the time. I'm, I'm usually by myself. Uh, I really don't seek out my co-workers like that but that's just me y'all let us know if that's what you guys do yeah. at work if you seek out your friend i kind of get like finding your friend if you have a free time but exactly. not but not following my co-worker around like a lost puppy i'm just not gonna do it well that's how other people had perceived it right to me it was just you know we would link up whenever we had whenever we had spare time and it was no different than I did with any of my other friends. Like literally, if I had a friend that worked in another area or in the same department, if they were in the front in the front of the department and I was in the back, if we had free time, we would just link up, link up I, I go grab, there was a Starbucks, you know, there, we would go grab Starbucks or whatever. Yeah, anyway, so, so um, me and this girl or whatever, we wind up, you know, how friends do we wind up talking about relationships. Now, keep in mind, I'm single, and she was in a relationship, and I guess, you know, just being a friend, she was talking to me about the stuff that she was going through in a relationship. Actually, I had hung out with her and her girlfriend. Right. Like, it was literally like nothing. Like, I never thought anything about it. I had hung out, me and a couple other people, they're gonna remain nameless, but they're all my, just homegirls, we all, it was a poetry slam, so we all got together and went to a poetry slam and, you know, just chopped it up or whatever like that. It was nothing, no ill will or intent. And um, anyway, fast forward, they wound up having relationship issues and I'm there for her as a friend. And next thing I know, we are literally, it, this literally came out of like nowhere. We're literally like after work one day, we're hanging out, we're sitting in the parking lot of Denny's and we're in her car and she asked me like we're sitting so adrian imagine this like imagine y'all are looking at us sitting in the car right now so adrian's in the driver's seat i'm in the passenger seat 
and in between us is the middle, like the console, right? So me and a girl, both of our arms are like resting on the console so I can like kind of barely feel her arm up against mine or whatever. And we're just chilling. I remember she asked me like, what are you thinking about right now? And I have, y'all, when I tell you, I have no idea where this came from. This is a new story for me too. So y'all hearing it just as raw as I am. So let's I thought I talked to you. I thought I told you this before. Nah, maybe I don't remember. Y'all remember I have a bad memory. So yeah. don't charge me. So yeah. yeah. So go ahead. Yeah. So anyway, so I remember her asking me, she was like, what are you thinking about? And I have, I literally have no idea where this came from. But when she asked me that, I was like, how soft your arm is that's what i said in my head like that's what i said in my head but i was like i don't want to tell you what i'm thinking about because of what my thoughts are and she's keeping mind like this my home girl like she in a full-blown relationship they have relationship problems but even if i had been a lesbian for years of my whole life that like would i would wrong. never yeah that would be wrong that would be wrong like i would never be like oh i'm sitting up here thinking about how soft your arm is up up against mine and you got an old lady like that's so that just popped in your head literally that literally just popped in my head ding, literally how soft out of, after after being with men this whole, whole time life. it just all of a sudden it just came like it was like an epi like yes it was like a was it mouth vomit Excuse me. I don't know. I don't know what it was. Honestly, I literally to this day, I have no idea what it was. I cannot explain where that thought came from. It blew me away. Like I was confused. What did she say? She didn't say anything. So before I actually told her what I actually thought when she asked me that, I just kind of was like, well, I don't want to say anything. I told her, like, I was like, I don't want to tell you what I'm thinking right now, whatever, because, you know, your situation or whatever, and I'm going to be respectful of your situation. And then, yeah, and then, um, you know, then I asked her, I was like, you know, so what's good with your situation or whatever before I tell you? And she was like, well, we're having relationship problems. And the girl at the time, she was like, the girl had changed their relationship status. They were living together, but the girl had changed her relationship status on her social media page to single. So she was like, well... I guess I'm single according to, you know, relationship status or whatever. So then when she said, said that, just to get things uh, clear out in the open, I told her after that, I told her or whatever. And then, and then what? Then this... we started making out literally okay. like, you know, we had a conversation, like she, not immediately, but like she um, told me that like, you know, she had been liking me and all of this stuff. And I literally had no idea. You know what I'm saying? And so anyway, so we started like kissing or whatever like that. And that was the very first time I ever had an experience with a woman. Literally have no idea where it came from. Literally like was the type of, I used to be that chick that was like, I don't understand why two, why two women would be together or why a woman would be, not two women would be together, but like why a woman would be with a, a another woman that's like masculine. Mm -hmm. They might as well be with a man and all now this stuff. Like that was me, like 100% <laughs> me, now like never in one million years would have thought I was in a relationship with a woman. But it literally You know what? Has, God will humble your ass. Yeah. Real quick. I mean, there was never no shade or anything like that. Like I was never. That's all talking. shade. That's all shade. Not really. It just wasn't understand. for me. Right, but that's when not you, shade. Well, when you're making statements like I don't understand why a woman would want to be with the, another woman, that's shade. That is. That that's shade. all shade. It. I can see where it is, can be perceived as shade, but it wasn't intended that way. It just was like that's something I don't understand. Okay. Like. Like to this day, still people who don't understand two women being together, two men being together, right. polyamorous relationships, right. whatever. It's people just who don't understand right. whatever. And that's, that just was me. I was just like, I don't get it. If that's you, by all means, go right ahead, do right. you. But for me, that's not that's not my ministry. That right. was that was my, um, my thought process. So anyway, so that happened. And then me and a girl or whatever, uh, me and Mary, we kind of kind of hung out a little bit or whatever and kind of casually dated but very 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 casually like nothing more than a kiss um we hung out a few times and other than that she wound up going back you know getting things fixed with her or working on things with her relationship and that situation completely the ship completely sailed and all that and then i was left like being completely confused because i'm like oh my gosh like what does this mean about me now like does this mean Cause you know how it is when it's your first when it's the first woman you think 
No, she's I don't. the only. No, but you've had you told I've me had, stories with women. You've been there first, and they thought I that you were the only one. I have had women who thought that they just like me, mm -hmm. but when because I've person. been in the game for so long, because I've been a lesbian pretty much all of my life. I've known that I was since gay. She was an adult. Yeah, I've known I was gay since I was uh, young, since maybe five. I knew I liked women, so I kind of knew. Like when a woman tells you like you're the only one that that's not true that that they like they end up that's you're the tester you know how you go to the store and you get like the little test spray to see if you like it or at not at the perfume at the, the little palm yeah powder, little test whatever. spray yeah that's that's what that was she was the test spray well, she was a test spray for me but literally like I legit felt like she was like the one off. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thought she was the one-off. It was a genuine feeling. It was never like I was ever just, like, curious and now mm -hmm. is the opportunity. I, it was none of that, like, legit none of that. This literally came out of nowhere. Like, it shocked everybody. It shocked my friends. It shocked my closest friends. Hell, it shocked me. It shocked my family. It shocked everybody. But then I was left kind of confused trying to do some self-exploration in regard to, like, what does this mean about my sexuality? Like, does this mean that I'm bisexual? Does this mean that I like women? Like, was she the, like, that one-off, like, or whatever, so. So how did you, how did you decipher that? I know a lot of people are going to ask, like, how do you know that Adrian is the person that you're going to be with and you're not going to go back? So, um, I guess the re, I guess how I know is that when I think about it, like, I had always had fairly good experiences with men. Like I'd never had experienced anything like super traumatic. Like I've never been like sexually assaulted or abused or anything like that. Thank God for that. Thank God. And you know, there was ne never anything that like quote unquote turned me away from men that, that I can think of. Uh, but it just was like, I was looking for something that I had not found. And I don't know if maybe it was just like, I didn't run into the right guy, but it just was like, almost like almost everything that I was looking for in like a male partner with that first girl, mm -hmm. everything seemed to line up. Okay. And I almost felt like, okay, this, it just feels right. It, is fulfilling everything that I'm looking for. You know what I'm saying? Like as core far value as wise. core value wise and just mm -hmm. like, you know, cause I had always been the type of uh, girl that was like, I'm gonna marry my best friend. Like somebody that I can get along with or whatever. But like I said, I had never had that type of best friend type feeling with anybody that I had ever dated in a relationship. And so, you know, it just left me ultimately curious as to trying to explore. So what I did to try to figure things out was I was, you know, on my plenty of fish. And so on the settings, you can actually set your settings to either be exposed to men, be exposed to women or both. So initially I had set it to be exposed to both, but then I kind of realized like the feeling that I had with Mary was more fulfilling than the feelings that I had before dating men. So I was like, let me kind of explore this more. Let me pay my attention and focus on the women's side of things. Mm -hmm. So I had shut down access to men. I was like, let me try to figure this out. So anyway, so, um, you know, when I said my plenty of fish or whatever, like I had said in some previous stories, y'all go back and check those out. Check them out, please. Um, there was one a girl that I had met, she was a little bit older than me. That situation didn't last long, never anything like super intimate. We hung out, she wanted me to be exclusive with her, whatever. We dated a little bit, but it was nothing serious. Um, and then there was another chick, which was the chick that we talked about before in the video that would yeah. come by my parents' house in a black truck. So other than Mary, and then the older lady and the girl in the black truck, Adrian's the fourth woman that I've ever come into any type of like dating encounter with, which I wouldn't even really count the girl in the black truck because I knew from jump. from jump she wasn't going to be my type. Mm. But um, I don't know, it was just a different feeling. It's just to me, the connection between two women is something that's unmatched. Like, you know, and that's a connection that I had never had dating a man before. Just the connection just wasn't really there. I remember adamantly like, 
like trying to facilitate a connection between the last ma male relationship that I was in and we had been together for years and it just it just wasn't there you know what I'm saying it just wasn't there it just was a totally different feeling and it was something that I felt like was worth me exploring and through my exploration of like talking to different women it's just so much more fulfilling to the point to where like I'm good, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see attractive men, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not blind, you know what I'm saying? I see men that's handsome or whatever like that, but I never have any type of, like, desire to, like, talk to a man or, you know, if men try to holler at me or whatever, it's just like, I'm swerving them, you know? First of all, all I gotta do is that, that's first of all. But second of all, even before then, like, it was nothing. So how does it feel for you knowing that I'm the, that you're the first woman that I've been um, with in a relationship with and been intimate with and all of that stuff. I feel honored. Man, mm -hmm. I feel honored. It's a privilege to be with you. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have the connection that we have, it doesn't matter if you've been with men or women. Um, it's the connection. So it didn't matter if I was in a male body or a female body. Um, I believe that we would have found each other because of the connection that we had. So it doesn't feel anything. I mean, it feels different because this is the first relationship for me where it is a healthy mentally and emotionally uh, well relationship that I've ever had. So I'm not saying that I didn't have good relationships before, mm -hmm. um, but I had to grow. But this is mm -hmm. a, the best relationship I've ever been in. So, it feels good. I feel honored. Okay. I feel like you was a virgin. Yeah, I, I, definitely. I got you. And that's one thing I can say as well, um, as far as like the intimacy part of it, like for me personally, I hadn't really like explored and done many things, you know what I'm saying, with, yeah. when I was dating men. So that leaves, and I'm so thankful for that because that leaves so much more for us to explore sexually. And, you know, it just makes <laughs> things new and more fun, new. interesting. And, you know, it's just a lot of things that we're still exploring and plan on exploring moving forward and stuff like that. And, you know, that's one thing that I do have an appreciation for. I do know that, you know, in a lesbian relationship that I'm, this is something that I'm learning that there are a lot, a lot of toys and fun mm -hmm. and different things like that versus you know the dynamic between being in a relationship with a man i think is totally different because they're more self-serving so not all not all men Some. i'm not saying yeah. that not all men i'm not saying that but a lot of times they're more self-serving they're more about wanting to please themselves at your whatever you know not to just sound like you're just being used but it's just different you yeah. know what i'm saying and you just find out about the different, you know, ways to explore your sexuality and stuff like that. So I'm enjoying that part of it as well in uh, comparison to, you know, being in a relationship with a man as well. Because, you know, mm. it's just it's just different. It's just things that lesbians do, I'm sure, to uh, gay men do it as well, you know, as far as exploring things sexually. So Well, you should do that whether you're with a man, a woman, mm -hmm. another man, you should do that anyway, because that's your person. So you should be able to be free sexually mm -hmm. with your person. It, you know, you shouldn't be, you know, uh, guarded in that regard. Mm -hmm. You should be able to do whatever you want to, you know, unless it's violating you uh, with your mate. So I think that's a lot of reason why people cheat because the other person doesn't want to explore and that, uh, that the other one wants to. So if you're open, I believe, like, you know, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Yeah, the sky's the limit. Anything else, Wolf? No, that's it, you guys. I just wanted to... Anything tell else? that story, I, yeah, no. Yeah, just tell that story. It was a story that we had that, actually, ironically, I had mentioned it before in one of our first videos, I think, and right. then we also got a request for that. So we're slowly chipping away at some of the requests that we've gotten in our comment section. Right. But that's what led to, you know, the very woman that you see sitting here and by the way y'all we have like like 30 something days oh yeah and we have 30 something yeah. days until we get married in hawaii um i'm excited you know yeah. so uh we get married in february the 11th yeah and hopefully we have that link i'm not sure if we got that that package i don't think if we not did, then we'll put some we'll, pictures up exactly so yeah oh 
Shout out to Fayetteville. You know, I, I got my shirt on, so let me give y'all a shout. Two six, stand up. Mm -hmm. uh, you do know I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina, so I just had to throw that plug out. Anything else, Mula? Mm -mm, that's it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, hit that notification button right up there. And thank you. And also, I want to give a plug to Alexis's her personal channel. Um, and it's called Vividly Alexis. Yes. Please go, if you're following this channel and you're not following her channel, that's a violation. You gotta go follow her channel, please. We gonna go through the comments. We might give them something away. You don't even know. So please follow her page as well. Uh, we'll uh, appreciate you for doing that. Again, it's Vividly Alexis. She only has 32 subscribers. So we wanna make sure that we, yeah, run that number up. Run it up, run it up. So if we got 110, we want her to have 140 something. <laughs> so let's go. Yes, I'll put the link in the description box of my channel. Thank you guys for your support. And we will Break talk out, to you guys soon. Bye, guys. Take care. Tell the issue where she wants the two tone spaceship. Yeah. Blow smoke screen daily. So the stress don't face me. Yeah. I want a grill for the mouthpiece. So write that a letter in my face. Your shawty just call me a fave.